we will put all of the ways that we have learned to say hello together, starting with Spanish. Are you ready? Hola. Konnichiwa. Habari. Anyang Haseo. Madam C.J. Walker, self made millionaire. Christmas baby. Before the Civil War, Owen and Minerva. Breed love were slaves. They worked in the cotton fields on a large Louisiana plantation. When the war ended in 1865, so did slavery. Millions of African Americans were freed, including the Breed Loves and their two children, Alex and Luvinia. Freedom was just about all the family had. Owen and Minerva did not have money, jobs, or a home. All they knew how to do was farm, but they had no land. The Breedloves did what a lot of other slaves did. They became sharecroppers. They rented land from their old master and farmed it. Owen and Minerva worked long, hard hours on their rented farm. Still, they stayed poor. Most of what they earned went to pay back the landowner for seeds and food. There was no way to get ahead. Owen and Minerva Breedlove were going to have a third child. Christmas was not far away. There was no money for gifts. Two days before Christmas in 1867, Sarah Breedlove was born. The family called her their Christmas baby. They had high hopes for this child. She was born free. Madam C.J. Walker was born Sarah Breedlove in this one-room cabin on a cotton plantation in Louisiana. Life was hard for Sarah and her family. It got even worse in 1874. Her parents died of yellow fever. Yellow fever is a disease carried by mosquitoes. It killed many people in the South between 1874 and 1878. Sarah's brother and sister, Alex and Luvinia, took care of her as best they could, but the cotton crops failed year after year. Alex decided to go out West. Luvinia and Sarah moved across the river to Vicksburg, Mississippi. The two young women took in laundry to make a living. Both soon married. Young Sarah married Moses McWilliams so she could have a home of her own. On June 6, 1885, Sarah's daughter Lelia was born. Two years later, Moses died. Vicksburg was a river town. Sarah watched riverboats float up and down the river night and day. She decided it was time to move on too. Sarah moved to St. Louis, Missouri in 1888. Soon, Sarah had a good laundry business there, but she wondered if life would ever be better for her and Lelia. Sarah worked hard so Lelia could go to school. Lelia was bright and enjoyed reading. Sarah sent her to Knoxville College in Tennessee. Meanwhile, Sarah wasn't happy doing laundry. She wanted to do more with her life. In 1904, Sarah went to hear Mrs. Margaret Mary Washington speak at a meeting of the National Association of Colored Women in St. Louis. Mrs. Washington was the wife of Booker T. Washington, the most well-known black leader of the time. Mrs. Washington gave a great speech about the rewards of hard work. Sarah made up her mind. She was going to improve her life. The Walker Plan. There were not many products for black women's hair problems. Sarah's hair was thin and dry. So Sarah decided to make a hair grower to use on her own hair. It worked. Her hair grew longer and thicker. Lelia was away in college. Sarah had married again, then divorced her husband. There was nothing keeping Sarah in St. Louis. So she moved to Denver, where her brother's family lived. Her brother had died earlier. She got a job in a drugstore. At night, she worked on her hair products. Soon, Sarah began selling her goods from door to door. Black women were happy to have something that made their hair look nice. Her sales were so good, she hired women to help sell door to door too. 
Sarah had known Charles Joseph Walker back in St. Louis. Now he lived in Denver too. Their friendship grew into love. On January the 4th, 1906, Charles and Sarah were married. From that time on, she called herself Madam C.J. Walker. The picture represents Walker before and after her wonderful discovery. Sarah's husband, C.J., helped with advertising. This ad was for Madam Walker's wonderful hair grower. Sarah and C.J. were divorced in 1912. When Lelia graduated from college, she came to help her mother. In 1908, Sarah and Lelia opened Lelia Beauty College in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They trained women in the Walker hair care plan. Women who graduated from Madam Walker School were called hair culturists. First, the culturists washed the woman's hair. Madam Walker's hair grower was added. Then the customer's hair was pressed with a hot comb and curled. Adam Walker trained women to have a complete look, well-groomed hair, well-pressed and clean clothing, and manicured hands. In 1910, Madam Walker decided to build her first factory in Indianapolis, Indiana. Right away, Madam Walker hired people to help build a strong business. Two lawyers, Robert Lee Brokenberg and Freeman Briley Ransom, managed the company. Madam C.J. Walker's first factory was located in Indianapolis, Indiana. She was 44 years old when she incorporated her company. Very few people knew how Madam Walker made her products. Violet Davis Reynolds was Madam Walker's secretary and good friend. They traveled together. They showed other black women that they could start businesses too. Black women loved the idea. In 1910, most black women made from two to $10 a week. Madam Walker's hair culturist were making $20 a week or more. Madam Walker enjoyed automobiles. She owned several. Although she had a driver, she sometimes drove herself. A year after moving to Indianapolis, the company had 950 salespeople. The company earned $1,000 a month. Madam Walker put the money back into the business. By 1918, the company was earning $250,000 a year. Madam Walker made history by becoming America's first female self-made millionaire, white or black. Whoo, I had to stop right there because out of all the years of my life, I did not know that. Ooh, this woman was a child of slaves. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. For a good cause, Lelia married and changed her name to Alilia. The marriage ended, but she kept the name Alilia Walker Robinson. Alilia didn't have any children of her own, so she adopted Mae Bryant, a young girl who worked at the Walker factory. She had long, thick hair. She became the model for the Walker Company. Madam Walker used her money to make life better for her family and the people who worked for her. She also gave freely through churches, schools, hospitals, children's homes, and other good causes. Madam Walker and Alilia were always interested in civil rights. At that time, the country was segregated. This meant that laws kept black people and white people apart. Blacks and whites couldn't ride a bus or train together. They couldn't go to the same schools. The three major products used in Madam Walker's salons were a hair grower, a vegetable shampoo, and glossine, a light oil used to give hair sheen. Alilia is seated front left and her daughter May is standing rear left. Madam Walker was known for giving donations to causes that helped her race. Here she is standing in front of Indianapolis's new black YMCA that was built in 1913. On the right of Madam Walker is Booker T. Washington, <laughs> the president of Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. Standing in the rear left is her lawyer, 
manager, and friend, F.B. Ransom. Once Madam Walker went to a white theater, they charged her more money because she was black. First, she sued the theater. Then, she built the Walker Building, a block-long business center in downtown Indianapolis. Inside, there was a new movie theater where black and white people could sit together. Most jobs weren't open to blacks. Madam Walker spoke to groups all over the country. She believed black people needed to start more businesses in their own neighborhoods. Then there would be more jobs for other African-Americans. In 1913, Alilia moved to Harlem, a mostly black neighborhood in New York City. She wanted her mother to move the business there. Harlem was becoming the center of black life. Finally, Madam Walker agreed that New York was the place to live. In 1916, she left Indianapolis, but the Walker factory stayed there. F.B. Ransom and Alice Kelly were left in charge. Miss Kelly knew Madam Walker's secret formula. Madam Walker and Alelia were the only other people who knew the formula at that time. Madam Walker had worked hard all her life. Now her health was poor. Her doctors warned her to slow down, but she did not know how to rest. Madam Walker traveled around the country giving speeches and opening new shops. Villa Luaro was and still is an impressive mansion overlooking the Hudson River in New York. The Walkers had big parties, picnics, and celebrations like the one above. Sarah Breedlove Walker died on May 25, 1919. She was 51 years old. Alelia stayed in New York. She used her great wealth to help struggling black authors, artists, and musicians in the 1920s. In 1931, she died at age 46. Madam C.J. Walker was an inspiration to many people. Although she was born a sharecropper's daughter, she died one of the richest women in the United States, black or white. After Madam Walker died, Alelia became a very wealthy woman. She enjoyed life to the fullest. Now I press my own clothes, so I can't tell you where to go for that, but just don't bring them to me. <laughs> By the 1920s, Harlem, a neighborhood in New York City, had become the most well-known African-American community in the nation. Many talented artists had moved there from southern towns and smaller cities in the north. In 1925, a scholar named Alan Locke assembled a collection of their work. His book, The New Negro, included writers such as Zora Neale Hurston, County Cullen, and Langston Hughes. In the book's introduction, Locke announced the arrival of a new Negro movement that came to be known as the Harlem Renaissance. Shaping the words, the best New York work by black writers could be found in the crisis, where editor W.E.B. Du Bois was in charge, but his brilliant literary editor, Jessie Redmond Fawcett often shaped the writing. She was a Philadelphia native and a graduate of Cornell University, 
where she may have been the first black woman to enroll. Fawcett later earned a graduate degree from the University of Pennsylvania before working at the crisis from 1919 to 1926. Known for discovering and encouraging young talent, she worked with Langston Hughes, Claude McKay, and Nella Larson, among others. A gifted writer herself, she wrote four novels, including Plum Bun and There Is Confusion. She also published poems as well as countless essays and reviews. In addition to the crisis, young writers were glad to see their work included in the Pages of Opportunity, a journal edited by Charles Johnson and published by the National Urban League, a civil rights organization founded in 1910. Opportunity sponsored annual contests and gave cash prizes to young writers. Zora Neale Hurston, Hughes, and Sterling Brown all won awards that helped them continue to write. Hughes praised editors Fawcett, Johnson, and Locke for making the Renaissance possible. They nursed us along until our books were born, he wrote. Something for the kids. Every year, the crisis devoted one issue to children. From 1920 to 1921, Du Bois and Fawcett took that idea a step further. They teamed up to edit the Brownies book, the first magazine created for black children. Each issue contained poems, stories, games, and articles about successful black people. Famous black artists illustrated the covers and well-known writers contributed to each issue. They produced 24 issues in all. Fortunes and fame. Entrepreneurs and business leaders also made great gangs during the Harlem Renaissance. One of them, Alelia Walker, became an important patron or supporter of the arts. She had inherited her fortune from her mother, Madam C.J. Walker, the nation's first self-made woman millionaire. As the president of her mother's hair care company, Alelia Walker, became a celebrity in her own right. She hosted Renaissance parties in Harlem and in the New York City suburbs where singers sang, musicians played, and poets recited late into the night. Yet do I marvel at this curious thing to make a poet black and bid him sing. County Cullen. And now we will practice saying goodbye in all the ways we have learned to say goodbye so far, starting with Spanish. Adios. Ang yang. Kwa heri. Sayonara.